I thought we could pop the hood on my retirement accounts inside of Vanguard to share with you how I was able to contribute $1,000 per month towards my retirement and share exactly how much I made and then stick around to the end because I'm going to be sharing the exact three, you got it, just three funds that I'm invested in that has helped me reach six figures in my retirement account. To start off this video, I thought sharing a timeline would be helpful for you in order to see exactly how I was able to really boost that contribution amount to what it is today, which is $1,000 per month. I was a corporate employee in my former years before I was doing Debt Free Millennials. So I really started out in the marketing and advertising world and they offered 401k plans. And then I eventually went and worked for my university for their marketing department and they offered a 403b plan. At that time, after I became debt free in 2014 and I was really had an influx of cash that I was no longer putting towards debt, I thought I really want to maximize my investing accounts and so I opened up a Roth IRA. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, not the unfortunate part that I opened it, but unfortunately with a financial advisor who is charging these commissions of 5% up front and 1% every year after. In some cases, I was in funds that were charging, you know, 1.5%. It was ridiculous. So I got out of that. So the timeline is in 2016, when I moved out here to California from Kansas and I was no longer working uh, for an employer, I was working for myself, I ended up rolling over that existing 403B from the university into a rollover IRA or a traditional IRA with Vanguard. And that's where I parked it so that I could take some control and ownership of the funds that I wanted to be invested in. And I really wanted to be invested in index funds. If you don't know what index funds are they are basically a basket of stocks that aim to replicate the performance of a specific market index over time such as the s p 500 basically is a list of stocks and then you can track the performance of those lists of stocks and so the index fund the s p 500 index fund I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's move forward. So 2017, I moved the Roth IRA from the financial advisor and I opened up a Roth IRA with Vanguard. So there was no penalties to do that. I basically changed ownership. And then in 2017 as well, I was running my own business. At that time, I had I was just starting Debt Free Millennials, but about a year and a half prior to that, I was running my own marketing consulting firm. And so I ended up opening up a SEP IRA with Vanguard. This is a simplified employee pension IRA. And I've done a whole video on what the SEP IRAs are. So I will link to that up here in the cards for you to check out. So 2016, 2017 were kind of my, let's get this organized. Let's move this over to the right brokerage company that I want to be with. And I really love Vanguard. I've been using them since that time. So what, six, seven years now. And then in 2020, when I really started to make really good revenue with debt-free millennials, I started to contribute $1,000 per month towards my retirement. So let's go ahead and hop inside of my Vanguard account and I'll show you exactly what the performance has looked like. Okay, so this is basically the lay of my retirement land, if you will. So between the three accounts that I have, the traditional, the Roth, and the SEP, this is all reflected in this graph. So you can see where my ending balance is currently of $122,000 towards my retirement. Yes, go Justine. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, rate of return is 9.5%, which is not bad. I'd, I'd really like to see that closer to 10% and beyond, but 9.5%, I'll take it with everything that's been going on wildly. But what's really interesting is that when I moved everything over in 2016, I moved over that 403B into the traditional and then moved over that Roth. So you can see these little spikes here in the beginning. And then when I was starting to really build my business right around 2016, 2017, 
I was putting in very little contributions towards my retirement. You can see $200 because I was still learning the ropes of running my own business and I wasn't really taking home a lot of money either. So this was kind of a period of where I was like, uh, what? And then <laughs> you can see this big jump here, $3,200 in 2018 as a re recommendation from my CPA. She said, no, actually you can con contribute more if you'd like because you've been making more. So this is where I ended up contributing more to those funds. And as a way, we were able to reduce our taxable income for that tax year. So I did this again in uh, 2020. You can see a big purchase of 6,300 to really reduce the amount of taxes that I was owing in that year. And then after 2020, when 2020 happened, which was obviously a crazy time for everybody, actually my business was really doing very well. Tons of clients were asking me to write personal finance content, create content for them, because so many people were panicked about what was going to happen with the economy in the stock market and how could we really boost our savings and the stimulus checks. And so that's what really contributed to me being more consistent with my contributions of $1,000. So you can see me just really increasing this amount over time from the past two, three years already. But let me show you exactly how this breaks down per account. All right, so this is the rollover IRA. I have not contributed to it basically in a very, very long time. When was the last time? 2019, mainly because I'm focused on the SEP IRA right now and that's kind of the biggest one that I wanna maximize. And also because the rollover IRA, the contribution limits are 6,500 within the year, I can actually contribute way more towards my SEP IRA and so that's really been my big focal point. But this account actually for it, for me not contributing anything, over the last like four years, it's done really well. 10.7% rate of return and it has just under 36K in it. And here's my Roth IRA. So the Roth IRA is just sitting under $32,000. The rate of return is 10.8% and it's done really well. It's just, it's just been really great. Okay, so I haven't contributed much to the Roth IRA mainly because of the modified adjusted gross income for married individuals is $153,000 for 2023 and for just doing a quick Google search was uh, must be under 144,000 for the tax year 2022. This is for a single person, excuse me. And for a married filing jointly must be under 214 and 228. So I know, I think after, I got to check with my CPA on the modified adjusted gross income. This is where it gets a little tricky, especially if you are a high income earner or together you and your spouse are high income income earners on your tax return, this can be a little tricky because your contribution limits are then phased out. You can't contribute up to the max. It's actually at a smaller amount. And so calculating that can be a bit hairy. So this is where really relying on a CPA to help you understand exactly what that amount is, it's gonna be really helpful. To avoid all that for now, I just said, I'm just gonna keep it at zero because again, I'm still really focused on the SEP IRA contributions. So here's the interesting one that I think you're like gonna be like, wow, this is insane because my SEP IRA has gone gangbusters. I opened this up in 2017 uh, with $2,000 and I didn't do much after that. <laughs> you can see, I really didn't do much until my CPA said, no, you can contribute contrib more, let's do that. And so I kind of did that and then 2020 hit and boom, it was just like off to the races with how much I was putting towards the SEP. So I have just under $55,000 total and you can see just how crazy. So the yellow line is how much I've contributed and then the blue line is the actual balance of my investing account, how it's performed against the stock market. Unfortunately, <laughs> this one also has the least rate of return at 6.2%. If you're still with me in this video, then you've basically gotten to the best part, which is I'm going to be sharing the three funds that I'm invested in inside of my retirement accounts. I've kept it really, really simple by choosing index funds that basically track 
the performance and replicate the performance of a specific market index. So let's go ahead and just hop into the list. The first one is VFFVX. This is the Vanguard target retirement of 2055. This was a target year specific to me and my age. And so if you are wanting to do a target fund, what's cool about the target funds is that these are basically a basket of stocks that also have a target, a specific target retirement retirement date in mind. So as you get closer to that year, instead of that collection of stocks and all of those things that are part of that fund, instead of that all being really aggressive growth, as you get closer, it's going to back off and be reinvested automatically into conservative funds. It does the work for you, which I'm totally a fan of. I'm a lazy investor, so this is perfect. When you are looking at different funds to buy, a quick tip, and this is really simple to do, is just look at the fund average annual returns. And Vanguard did this really nicely because it's fee adjusted. The individual funds that you invest in come with their own set of fees, right? There's actually a human person in most cases, there's a human person overseeing and managing that fund on your behalf. But because Vanguard has really implemented this practice of being uh, not as actively managed, then their expense ratios are actually much, much lower, which I love. So the, the target retirement one, actually the, the expense ratio here is a little bit higher than the other two I'm going to share. And that's because there's a little bit more active, like, as asset allocation that's happening inside of the fund because we've got that fund date in mind. So what I like to do, if you're trying to do this DIY and you're not using a financial advisor, what I like to do is the, look at the fund average annual returns. So don't look at the year to date, don't look at one year, three year, five year. What you're really wanting to look at is the since inception date. And if it's been 10 plus years, that's a really good sign that this fund is doing well, it's got a good performance track record and we're sitting at 9.39%. And then it's got this benchmark here to show you like, okay, am I hitting the benchmark? Pretty much. And this is going to change over time as things with the economy and the stock market changes. So 9.39% is kind of what I look at. I look at the inception rate of return over time since 2010, this is what it's been earning. The last 10 years, this is what it's been earning. The last three years has, have been amazing, but again, we're not looking at three years. I'm looking at keeping this fund until 2055. So that's the first thing I look at. The second thing that I look at is the expense ratio. Make sure this number right here is as low as possible. The expense ratio simply means the cost of owning that fund, the cost of buying that fund and keeping it. So you wanna make sure that's low as possible. So this is the first fund that I'm invested in. The second one is VFIAX. This is the Vanguard 500 Index Fund. Now I'm in the Admiral class, meaning that I can set up up automatic monthly contributions into purchasing this fund every single month. So that's the Admiral. If you see that, that's all that means. It just means you get access to doing your monthly automatic contributions. The expense ratio here is 0.04%. Yes, love it. And then the fund average annual returns here, the year to date is 9%. That's awesome. 10 years, 12% incredible. Since 2000, it's 7.16%. So this is more realistic. I hate when I see Dave Ramsey saying, oh, you're going to get 12% return, blah, blah, blah. Um, not all of the time. You got to really take a look at each of these funds and see exactly what's going on. And then collectively, how is that adjusting and affecting the performance of your retirement accounts? So this is the second one in the Vanguard 500 index tracks the performance of the S&P 500. It's great. Uh, you can even see, I love how Vanguard has revamped their website, slow bits and pieces. They're rolling this out, but I have just been so impressed with the revamp of their website. So you can see exactly what it's in. It's in domestic stock. This is a large market cap blend of growth and value stocks. So this is really going to 
enhance the growth and performance of your socks. This is more, way more aggressive than a bond for sure, absolutely. Okay, so the third fund that I'm invested in is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, VTSAX is the ticker symbol, and this is hands down my favorite one. It tracks, it says it in the name, it tracks the total stock market, and so you're gonna see the expense ratio of 0.04%, again, very, very good, and then you're going to see here since it's Inception in 2000, a 7.42% rate of return, 10 year at 11.6%. So over time, we just hope that things just get better and better. But as you can see, like 7.4%, 7.1%, 9.39%, it's all going up, you guys. This is way better. Like investing in these funds is way better than, easily way better than putting in your closet. I hope you're not putting money in the closet. Easily way better than putting in a traditional savings account. I hope you're not doing that because that's literally earning 0.01%. Ew, that's just major ick. And then high yield savings accounts are 3% right now, which is great for your short to midterm savings goals, but not for retirement. Retirement needs retirement accounts and needs really active funds to help you get there. That's a look at how I've been able to kind of do this journey of retirement investing and doing it DIY. I don't work with a financial advisor. I'm doing this all on my own and I hope you take this video as education for you and that this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you this is these are the funds you absolutely need to be in. I'm sharing with you what funds are out there so that you can go forth and do your research and actually take some action on this. And maybe if you are working with a financial advisor, ask them what the expense ratios are or look it up yourself. Ask them how much their advisor fees are. What are the annual fees to work with them? Have them give you a dollar amount. I betcha, I have a hunch that they will be resistant to give you that dollar amount, especially if they know they're making big bucks off of you. And see, wouldn't it be cool if you could DIY this? Wouldn't it be cool if you educated yourself enough to a point where you could pocket more of your investing dollars and use it to fuel a life of financial freedom? If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, but even better than that, come join us by subscribing to the Debt Free Millennials family and the channel. This is where we are building confident millennials who are committed to unwavering financial confidence that leads to more fun and less payments. And I have a goal to hit 100,000 subscribers. We are so close to that goal. So go ahead and hit subscribe and I'll join you inside of the community. I'll catch you in the next one.